Hey, welcome, welcome back. back. I'm Adam. I'm Brett. We are the, the Wall Twins. Twins. And today, tonight, this, this evening, evening, beautiful evening, we, we cook, cook again. And I am so excited. Well, I'm, I'm excited for every cook, but this one is another one that Adam has never tried. I've done plenty of times. And it is, in my opinion, just about as close to the real thing as you can get by making it home. That's right, tonight we do our take on Chick-fil-A's chicken sandwich. If that's something you're interested in to see our take on this, then stick around while we dig, dig in. in. I can't believe the Wall Twins. They're right there. That's one of them. That's the I'm other the one. one. I'm the, the other one. Like we said, welcome back. However, if this is your first time to our channel, welcome. welcome. Consider subscribing and hit the notification bell so you don't miss a thing. We love to hang, we love to cook, and we just love having a good time together. And today, we're gonna have a good time cooking this amazing chicken sandwich. I've been wanting to do my own take on the Chick-fil-A chicken sandwich for some time. Brett has done this a few times and he said, Adam, I'm gonna show you how it's done and we're gonna throw it on the Blackstone using a technique I had not used before, a shallow fry. Brett's gonna walk us through the process. Yep. We're gonna get to it. Let's talk about the groceries. So we do have our chicken cutlets. These are thinner cut pieces of chicken. We wanted them thinner because with the shallow fry, breading will cook too fast and burn if we have too thick a cut of chicken. If we deep fried these or did this a different way, we wouldn't have to worry about it. But for this cook, they are thin cut pieces of chicken, which is great, fantastic. We've got our flour, we've got baking powder, just a touch, we're gonna to be using about a tablespoon. We've got our pickles. Teaspoon. A teaspoon. We've got our pickles to throw on afterwards on our buns. We've got uh, we've got what we call the usual suspects: that salt, pepper, garlic powder, onion powder, adobo, and accent. All in one. We mix those up, and we use that fairly liberally just to taste to help with flavor. All right. We also have eggs for our egg wash measurements, and everything can be found in the description. And one last secret ingredient: Lowry's. We forgot to throw that in as well when we were talking about our groceries. All right. Let's go ahead and get to this. This is quite a process. We're gonna set this up and then we're gonna get these. Right now the burners have been on for about five minutes. We've got it again, another low and slow cook. These are down to low to medium low, uh, the burners, and we're just using this side, these two burners. The other side is set up for our prep station so we can dredge these, uh, get these set up, and we'll go from there, Brett. Let's get to the cook, buddy. All right, so Brett is gonna go ahead and dredge these. We're gonna get these ready. Brett, what do you need? Yeah, so the first thing I'm gonna do is take the usual suspects, our usual suspects, and I'm gonna throw them down on this plate. I found the easiest to do is just do this with each piece individually. So, and then I'm gonna take the Lowry's, pop that on there, and then go ahead and hand me one of the cutlets. You got it. And then you wanna cover this, in my opinion, very liberally. So you're gonna do that. And then we're gonna take it there. So you can see that is nice and good to go. We wanna make sure it's covered and smothered on both sides completely, which it is. So then I'm gonna go flour, egg wash, back into the flour, set it here for the cook. And then we'll get one more done remove the plates so we can have it here and then adam is going to take over the cook from there so oh, yeah. this one piece is down here's how it goes it goes quick it is a very messy thing i'm glad we've got the gloves you want to cover this absolutely completely in every nook cranny inch Perfect. centimeter yes so there we go that is the first you can see it's done and come into the egg wash same thing you want it completely covered here and for all the ingredients and the measurements, again, Adam will have posted below. Post Malone? Post, Post Malone, my favorite rapper. Post Malone. Okay. Post Melon, my favorite fruit. Yeah. <laughs> again, we wanna make sure every nook, cranny, is absolutely covered in this flour. Okay, there's one down. Hand me the other piece. You got it, my friend. Do you need to lay down your usual suspects and all that? Yes, I do. So Brett, can you explain what you're doing you, here, buddy? You see what happened was, um, I kind of forgot to do this first process of this one. 
Fortunately, we did have more chicken, which of course we do for the family. So listen, I, I don't mind actually even trying that other one. So once these this cook is done, we'll throw that other one on without these or suspects. We can always season after if we need to. I was gonna say, I, I, you can season with with the, you know, with the over the flour. So it's gonna be fine before we even go in. So it's, it's uh, you know, it's, I'm just super glad that we caught it. Cause I'd hate for you to get that one and be like, well, I can, I can taste the pickle. <laughs> the pickle else. and flour is all I'm getting. So completely covered. You're right. So afterwards we'll go ahead and throw that one, the seasonings on after yep. for the cook, but let's just go ahead and get this one going. Yep. So let's mm -hmm. move the plate. Yep. Move the plate. Thank you, sir. And there we go. Again, I'm going to change gloves. All right, I'm going to go ahead and set this up for our other angle for the cook. All right, so we've got that ready. Those are dredged, ready to go, ready to toss onto the Blackstone. Now, Brett, explain real quick the process for the shallow... The shallow fry. You know, usually a shallow fry you do in a pan, but we're doing it on the Blackstone, and we're going to show you how we're doing it. Normally, you'll notice we'll lay some oil down on the Blackstone, take a spatula, and kind of spread that. We don't want to do that in this case. We want to use that that little puddle of oil is going to act as our shallow fry. And you can see, Perfect. wow, how do you fry a chick? How do you try fry chicken on the Blackstone? We're about to show you. Check this out. All right, Adam. So we're just going to do one at a time. So we're going to get the first one going. Um, yep, you can put a little more, just enough for the chicken to be covered. So there you Two. go. Just start with the one. Put one on at a time and get that cooking process going, and then you'll start the second one and lay it Ooh. away from you, yeah. Okay. And then go ahead and get oil ready for the second one. Okay, we're using these two burners, so I'm gonna do this one just right here. Yep. And again, make sure there's enough for that chicken to sit in it. And as you start near you and yep. lay it away from you. We good? There we go, we're gonna go seriously a couple minutes. Let me get some and paper then, towels real quick. Yep. And then when you pay attention, you gotta think about it when you're gonna flip it. Take the spatula, hold it up, pour some oil down, and then flip. Okay, yep. sounds good. And how long are we leaving this? Uh, maybe two minutes aside. Um, you'll see. Um, so I've got my watch going. Okay, and again, this is my hot zone, so this may need just a little bit longer. In fact, we don't have that third zone on. So do I want to maybe turn this up just a little? Why not? Fine, I did. Should we check it? Check it. Pretty good. All right, been long enough, bro. Sure, take take the spatch. Oh, you're gonna do that flip? I figured I'd pull this up. I, I like the spatch. Okay, go. Throw the oil down and make a quick flip, go. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Now, it looks like you can see, we definitely lost some breading right here. I'm not too worried. The rest of us looks absolutely great. Look how crispy that is, Adam. Yeah, let's go ahead and leave that one on one or two. Yeah. And this piece is also a little thicker, right. so it's going to take longer to cook anyway. Okay. So yeah. Good. So we're going to start setting these up because we're going to move those right onto our plates. We could probably move that off to the side. Got our mess there. That's okay. All right. This is, like I said, this is the fast cooking side here. Okay. Still needs a minute. That. That's yeah, ready to go. It looks like it could be ready. Now get your oil ready. Yep. Right there. And flip. Boom. Oh, that looks perfect, bro. Oh, man, this is looking so good. Check that. Okay, it's just that about there. Minutes. Yeah, you're kind of, yeah, there you go. Okay, let's put some pickles on that. All right, and this has been on now for about two minutes on this side. Yep. Um, so this is, again, this isn't super high heat. The low heat seems to be coming out just, honestly, just perfect. I can smell this. It smells Chick-fil-A. It does. It does. That is crazy. And this is going to be one of those where you say it can look amazing, which it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but what do you mean? <laughs> Even though the breading's coming off, I don't care. It mm -hmm. looks unbelievable. And the breading coming, coming off could be because it didn't dry it up enough, and so... Which is totally, okay, the biggest thing, and I cannot stress this enough, when you pull it out of the brine, damp it as dry as you can. That's right. All okay. right, you ready? Oh man, all right, listen. That was actually a lot of fun. I gotta say, outside of the teppanyaki cook, 
that was a little bit more of a chore to do. Having said that, still relatively easy. Once you get that chicken ready, get it through the dredge and get it prepped, if we just moved that straight onto the cook, we wouldn't have lost any of the breading. That would have been perfect. Yours came out more perfecter than mine. Having said that, this one looks spectacular. This one looks delicious. It smells delicious. I can't wait to dig into this sandwich. It is super hot, so we do have to wait a few minutes before we can taste it. We don't need I to think, explain that. I think it's good. Brett's busy loading his up with pickles. I think mine is perfect the way it is. I can't wait to dig into this to see if this truly is a Chick-fil-A copycat, if this is just as good as the real thing. Maybe I can save myself a few dollars by just digging in and creating my own. Which, by the way, now that I've seen the process, I could do this. I could do this for me, for the entire family. Granted, we don't have the Chick-fil-A buns. We've got these great King Wonder Buns, which are great. Now that you've seen the cook, you know how to do it. You can do it for yourself and your family. And you can even kind of tweak it in different ways that you might think are even a little better. But you know what, Brett? I'm, I'm tired of talking. Like we've said, this can look amazing. Which you said you didn't think this does. This absolutely looks amazing. Okay, okay. It can, it can smell amazing. Which it absolutely does. Welcome to Chick-fil-A. How may I help you? <laughs> but if this doesn't taste amazing, then this was all, all for naught. Cheers. I'll eat to that. My brother. I got to set this down so I can actually grab this monster of a sandwich. <laughs> Cheers. I'll eat to that. Mmm. Yep. You know what? Ah. I'm not kidding. I really was expecting to just be like, okay, that tasted good, it's fine. What an excellent coffee cap. Because it's thinner, it doesn't have the thick juiciness of the Chick-fil-A chicken sandwich. Having said that, that chicken is tender. It is juicy just enough, that, that little cutlet that we used. And those spices go so well with that pickle marinade that we use. This is so excellent. Absolutely amazing. Definitely taste the pickle that you de mm. and that you, you now will find out is the deliciousness that you get in a Chick-fil-A oh chicken gosh. sandwich. Well, oh my heck. All right. Nailed that one. I love it. This is incredible. Um, I might go a little bit lighter on the seasonings just yep. to get more of the pickle flavor. I was about to say that. Mm. That's what, the one thing I'm, I'm taking away from this is that, um, I don't know, for rushing or whatever, I did go pretty heavy with the seasonings. No need. Just sprinkle on the, uh, sprinkle them on nice and light. The, the pickle brine is the star of this show, right. not the seasonings. Other than that, though, this is absolutely amazing. I might even suggest just put some of the seasonings in with the flour. flour. Let it mix That's in how I, I've done it in the past before. I Sorry to interrupt This is you. good. No worries. And that works, but regardless, this is darn near perfect. I can't wait to work on it again. Keep doing it. Give us your take. If you want to give this a try, try it and tell us how it works out for you. I love this so much. We cannot wait to go and see what other copycat recipes and things that we can try. I want to do the nuggets of these. That is really Oh yeah, that's a fun one up. too. So if you liked our take on this, then go ahead and give us a thumbs up. However, if you didn't like it and you decided, you know what, Popeyes is better than chicken, than Chick-fil-A, whatever it is, for whatever reason you don't like it, go ahead and hit the thumbs down two times for us because we get it. Aside from coming to do this amazing copycat recipe, Brett, why else are we doing this? Because all we do is twin, no, no matter what. what. And with that, we bid you adieu. And adieu. Forget, Forget to, to like and subscribe. And grit along. along.